Hello and thank you for joining our webinar this afternoon. Uh, so we have Eric Dewitt here from Microsoft and Toby Keane from eVault who will be going through the webinar with you. So Bytes have chosen to work with eVault due to the flexibility in their proposition. So due to the changes in infrastructure and backup, to have an offering that is able to work in, in a traditional software approach in an appliance offering, a dedicated eVault cloud or working with Microsoft Azure will give our customers the flexibility they need. So as Bytes is such a strong Microsoft licensing software provider, it makes sense that we work closely with Microsoft's best partners and we see eVault as one of those. So I'm now going to pass you over to Toby from eVault and Eric from Microsoft to help you understand the offering further. So good afternoon everybody, uh, my name is Toby Keane, I'm the channel manager for the UK for eVault and I have uh, alongside me uh, Eric, um, who I'll let him introduce himself from Microsoft. Hey, thank you, Toby. Yeah, my name is Eric Hewitt, and I'm part of Microsoft's Enterprise Group, and uh, have experience working with Evolve for about three years now. That's great. Thanks, Eric. So, um, without uh, hanging around, let, let's, let's crack on with the the session. The first thing I'd like to do is really give you a, a bit of a background uh, to Evolve and who we are. Um, I'm sure many of you have heard of, or all of you should have heard of Microsoft, um, but maybe not quite so many have heard of Evolve. Um, Suffice to say, we are part of Seagate, so um, one of the world's largest disk manufacturers and a, uh, a primary uh, supplier to Microsoft for the uh, Azure data centers for all the hard disks. Uh, we're, a, we're a company that provides cloud-connected backup, and we've been doing that since 1997, so we actually predate the term cloud, and we have uh, a large number of customers uh, around the world, um, and we're currently performing around about 15,000 uh, recoveries every month from uh, out of our data centers. Um, and we have a very strong uh, track record with our customers uh, with, a, with a huge sort of satisfaction rating. Um, we're very much aligned and partnered with uh, Microsoft around uh, Azure uh, in terms of uh, the developer program. And also, we're a, uh, a gold application development partner of Microsoft. So to add a bit of color as to, as to what we do and how, how we do it, we have a, a network of our own data centers, as well as working alongside uh, Microsoft and the uh, Azure platform. Um, and within our own data centers, we already have over 120 petabytes of customer data that's backed up into our data centers uh, around, around the world. Um, and we're also doing um, uh, a number of uh, other solutions around cloud-based disaster recovery. Uh, and we're performing over 400 successful DR tests per year for each of those customers um, so they can validate that their, their failover and their disaster recovery programs are, uh, are actually going to work when, when, it, when it comes down to it. So what I'm going to do now is uh, hand over to Eric, and he's going to give you a bit more information and background to the Windows Azure platform. Great. Thanks, Toby. Uh, just to give a little bit of background on Azure, and the reason that we're going through Azure is because one of the deployment options for uh, Evolt's uh, products is to run the back end of their cloud service on Azure, as well as store encrypted compressed data on top of Azure. So the uh, you know, reliability, availability of the platform is certainly an integral part of the overall solution. So a little bit of background on Azure. Um, you know, Azure is the only cloud platform that Gartner has uh, recognized in its magic, magic quadrants, both for infrastructure as a service and platform as a service. Uh, part of the reason for that is that um, you know, it's a, a broad set of services that we continue to enhance. Uh, so over the last 12 months, we've had 94 uh, releases of a combination of new functionalities as well as increased uh, performance and capabilities of existing services. Next slide. With that as well, uh, Azure has a global presence. Uh, here's a kind of snapshot of our data centers. Uh, what you can see is that we have uh, a number of data centers as well as CDN points. Those are content distribution network points. Um, they get data cached closer to your end customers um, in the case of distributing um, 
we'll say video or graphic files. So not as relevant to the eVault solution, but just part of our overall global presence. Uh, with that, we have four data centers in the United States. We have two in Europe, uh, one of which is in Dublin, the other is in Amsterdam. Uh, we released uh, or opened a new data center in Brazil, just in time for the, the World Cup. Um, and then across Asia, we have two data centers in Japan. Uh, we've got uh, two in China that are through a partnership with a company called 21BNet, uh, as well as Hong Kong, Singapore, and two data centers opening shortly in Australia. Uh, data centers are always paired. Uh, for additional reliability. So uh, we're able to store data in two data centers, and if one data center goes down, you still have access to your data. Uh, so with that, kind of as you'd expect from a world-class um, um, cloud service, there's 24 by 7 support. Uh, we have over uh, you know, a billion customers, 20 million uh, businesses using overall Microsoft's cloud services. Uh, we're able to build local currencies and you know, across all of our cloud services, you know, have many, many years of uh, experience you know, going all the way back to Hotmail and MSN through Bing, now Office 365, Azure, Xbox Live, etc. Next slide. Okay, just a little bit about the background of um, the kind of certifications, compliance, um, overall privacy for Azure. Um, we're not going to go into the details of the individual services, but just a little bit about you know how we're building uh, high level of trust into the platform. Uh, so with that, um, you know, it's kind of starting with the, the basic certifications. You know, the overall data center you know, has passed the ISO 27001 uh, audit certification um, around kind of our policies, uh, security measures that are in place, uh, but as well as that our services have also received a number of other um, kind of important third-party validations. So these are all with uh, third-party audits. Uh, some of the most important ones that may be of interest would be the uh, PCI compliance. So it means that uh, we've passed audits for uh, being able to handle secure credit card data. Um, you know, in addition to things like FedRAMP and HIPAA in the U.S., other ones that may be of great interest would be um, meeting the U.K.'s uh, government cloud uh, level two accreditation. So you know, we continue to um, you know, go through additional third-party audits for additional certifications uh, you know, as customers request. Uh, but we do have a website. It's our Microsoft Azure Trust Center that you can find at azure.microsoft.com. We can find lots of information about security, privacy, compliance, and you know number of questions and resources that you may have. Hey, thank you, Sarah. Hi. This is Eric. Sorry for the, uh, the technical issues we had there. I was kind of pick back up where we had uh, left off here. Um, basically, I was just talking about how uh, the Azure platform with Microsoft is the uh, the first and uh, only cloud provider so far to have received joint approval from the European Union authorities for our strong contractual commitments to comply with EU privacy laws no matter where your data is located. Uh, so with that, if you're storing data on the Azure platform, it'll be fully uh, protected underneath the EU's data protection laws. So Toby, next slide. Okay. Uh, and just uh, a kind of a final note on uh, the Azure platform before we go into more detail on, uh, on eVault. Uh, just a little bit about our design principles and how this actually uh, helps quite a bit with your, your data resiliency. Um, so the way that Azure has been designed and engineered is that uh, everything is designed to be able to fail. Uh, we're designed for resiliency, scale, economics, um, but we do um, design for every hardware component to be able to fail and the service and data to still be highly available. Uh, so with that, we're designing for you know, great economics to make sure that we can continue to provide you know, lower and lower prices. You're taking advantage of uh, the cost of, of compute, hardware, networking, uh, continue to die in decline in costs, as well as the additional um, efficiencies we're able to build into the platform. Uh, with that, it's only uh, billing you for what you actually use, so you're not having to over-provision capacity uh, like you may with uh, hardware today. Uh, we're paying for things that you're either not using or potentially may never use. Um, it's highly automated and elastic, so we're able to scale up and scale down. And it's fully managed, always up, always on. So with that, when it comes to storage, it's probably the best example and the most relevant due to um, you know, eVault storing large amounts of data in the, uh, the Azure cloud. With that, we keep uh, six copies of data. Um, and in a single data center, we'll keep uh, three different copies of data. We'll keep it in three different racks. So you can have you know, a hard drive fail, you can have a rack fail, two hard drives fail, two racks fail, and all of the data is still secure within a single data center for high resiliency. 
Uh, we take that a step further, though, where we're actually uh, doing geo-redundant data as well. So we're actually storing all of that data on a second uh, set of three hard disks across three different racks. So, you know, in order to actually lose data, you'd have to have five different hard drives on five different racks across two different data centers fail. So that's where we've built in that high resiliency, uh, as well as we keep our data centers at least 500 miles apart, say 1,000 kilometers, uh, so that a single natural disaster doesn't take down, you know, potentially two data centers. So that's kind of the foundation that um, the eVaults have uh, been built upon uh, from that data center perspective and to be able to store data. Thank you, Toby. Thanks, Eric. So just moving on now to a bit more about um, how eVault then takes and builds upon the uh, Azure uh, infrastructure to deliver a, um, uh, in a very much a, uh, an embedded uh, backup solution for our customers. So there are a number of concerns, obviously, that um, many customers have about cloud uh, services, and I guess that's, that's highlighted really around um, backup in terms of moving uh, their backup services into a cloud-based uh, architecture. And they can be summed up in these three points here, is really how do I actually get my data there efficiently and reliably, and how secure is it when it's there and, and, and getting it there. And also there's this, this um, third point here, which is how do I preserve and maintain my rights over that data? As a customer, that's your data. Um, you, need to be, you need to be confident that where it's going, it, 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 uh, the, the sovereignty of that data, it remains yours and no one else has access to it or, or could pass that on to, to a third party um, under regulation or, or otherwise. So our, con our connected technology is designed very much with all those points in mind, and uh, I'll show you now how we kind of address those. So the first point really is around um, designed, uh, te technology designed to move data efficiently and reliably. One of the key things you have to do when you're working with uh, network connections and, and uh, variable bandwidths and all those sorts of things is, uh, is trying to move the minimum amount of data across. So it's really looking at um, uh, block level changes. So even if a file in its entirety, entirety might uh, register that's been updated, maybe only a few, few blocks of data have, have actually been um, uh, changed uh, since the last backup. So we only take those small deltas, those block level changes, and transmit those across. One of the key things about the way that Evolve technology works is that even though we're transmitting the minimum amount of data, every backup we do is effectively a full backup. So your ability to restore does not mean you have to do a, um, a full um, a restore then followed by lots of small incrementals. Uh, every, every restore is a, is a, is a full, uh, full uh, restore. And the other, thing, the other mechanism by which we can improve the performance is by inserting an on-premise or network-based vault. So this is um, either a virtual or physical device that uh, be situated in your, within your network, so it's on-premise, and the backups then uh, are sort of driven to that first and then streamed up into the uh, Azure data centers. And that gives us a number of benefits in terms of land speed performance, um, so you get much higher, higher performance than, than relying on your purely on, on the direct um, injection into, into the cloud. Um, and it also means there's redundancy in the process, so should the cloud or, the, or your uh, network connection uh, out to the internet be disrupted, you can still perform backups and you can still perform restores. And even if the reverse happens, the local device is uh, the local vault, uh, goes offline, you can still back up to the, uh, the cloud and still restore from the cloud. And this means that we can have a far more flexible, adaptable, and resilient mechanism to do backups and restores uh, when we're talking uh, about cloud-based um, backups. So the second point is all about the security. Um, one of the key things that we do, and excuse the pun there by using the word key, um, is really making sure that the data is encrypted from the moment we start touching it. Um, so the moment we process the data on our on, on, on your front-end servers and start analyzing it to, to perform the backup, we then uh, ensure it's encrypted before it departs that machine. So even across your own internal network, it's encrypted, and of course, uh, more importantly, when it's pushed out uh, across the, uh, in, up into the cloud, it remains encrypted all the way through to where it's stored, and even then, it remains encrypted. So when I put there beginning 
to uh, to end encryption. I mean, from the back from the backup, it's it's encrypted all the way through to the point you actually restore it, and it lands back on the device you're restoring to. That is when it's decrypted. So it's not decrypted at any stage, um, and um, you as as the customer hold those keys. They are not held by Microsoft as, or or Evolve for that matter. Um, so we cannot decrypt the data. It's just de encrypted data sitting in a, in a remote uh, system, uh, which only you have access to because you hold the, the encryption keys. So it's very important to understand that as a, as a key attribute of any cloud-based service is that the data remains secure at all, at all levels and all times during the backup and restore process. And the third point we covered was supporting data sovereignty. Um, because you hold that encryption key yourself, um, the data that resides in uh, the Azure data centers is purely encrypted data. There's no mechanism for anyone to decrypt that data other than, than yourself. So if under any form of regulation we were uh, forced to uh, divulge that data or give that data to a government agency, all we would be giving them is encrypted data. Until they came to you and you had to surrender your key, if that was the case, then uh, they would not be able to decipher that or decrypt that. So again, it helps support that data sovereignty uh, and security for you. So some of the other attributes about what a cloud backup system really should be. In the top image you can see here is uh, typical of, of, uh, of many sort of classic backup technologies uh, leveraging the cloud, as they say. Um, and in most cases, it's just treating cloud storage as remote disk. There's no real intelligence base in the cloud. Um, there's no redundancy. Um, and uh, in many cases, it's, it's, uh, there's, it's slow and bandwidth heavy because it's moving the data in its full, full size. And there are also technologies out there which don't properly leverage uh, security to a level where we would be happy um, storing data remotely from, from your own data centers. The way that the eVault technology uh, works, um, it's an active system in the cloud. So when you're looking at what's actually um, put into the Azure data centers, it's actually um, an active system. It's a server running technology, running our, our Vault um, product, which is an active storage system. So it's receiving data, it's manipulating data, it's managing the, the, the backup data. It's an intelligent replica of the data that's stored on the on-premise Vault. Um, and that gives you this, this level of um, redundancy in, in the process. Uh, it's fast and it's light and very, very efficient because at all times we're only moving minimum amount of data uh, that we need to. Uh, and in, you know, as I mentioned before, the encryption remains uh, while in transit and at rest, um, so the data is, is, is kept secure. So these are some key attributes you should be looking for in any, any cloud backup solution. So some of the, the challenges that um, people are finding you know, within within uh, traditional um, backup solutions and that, and, and that they're looking to the, the cloud to uh, maybe uh, address those. Um, slow, unreliable backups, um, the, the manual movement of tapes uh, and the manual exporting and, and re-importing and locating the right tapes and so on uh, causes all sorts of issues uh, in terms of uh, the, the backups being slow themselves, uh, a low confidence in the ability to restore that data in any given uh, RTO, you know, which tape is on, where is it residing, how to get it back, and so on and so forth. Um, with a technology like eVault, basically you go into the UI, you find the data you want to restore, and you press restore, and, then, and the data comes back from wherever it's located, whether it's on a local device or, or, in, or in the uh, Azure data center. So it's a pretty much um, instantaneous first byte restore rather than having to wait for the right uh, media to be presented. Another challenge is um, making sure there's a, a, a viable and valid off-site DR copy of, of, of backup data. And that's um, part of the process with eVault. The, the whole system is designed with that in mind so that you don't have to worry about off-siting data all your attentions um, are, are mapped through this system, and uh, you, you get that the, the offsite DR copies, just to say, as part of the standard process, it's default. 
another benefit of moving to a, a, a disk-based solution, especially when you're leveraging um, cloud, is, it is the removal of all the costs and hassle of, of managing and buying and, and processing uh, physical media. Um, and a solution, you know, backup should be very much invisible. It's what you want is them there, so when you need to do a restore, they are there and, and uh, able to deliver your data back to you. Um, so automation, removing the manual intervention on a day-to-day -day basis um, is, 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 in, is important. Uh, Evolt is a, is a multi-platform solution. So again, if you're looking at consolidating multiple backup products, you may have some you know, different, different technologies for different platforms. Then again, we can cover uh, and enable a multi-platform multi solution. And one of the points, the last point there, if you're looking at backup and protecting um, uh, your endpoints, we have a solution there that um, is uh, pretty much admin, uh, uh, very, very admin light. Uh, it's uh, centralized and uh, it leverages the Azure cloud. And this, again, it's one of the most uh, the, the perfect way to deliver um, uh, an effective uh, endpoint uh, backup solution. So how does this interact with Zura in terms of your uh, Azure subscription, um, or whether you uh, are looking at that, or whether you're not you know, not considering an Azure in, of, of your own, the technology we have at Evolt can work with um, your own Azure licensing. We can insert um, Vault into your uh, um, your system, and we'll verify and audit and monitor and maintain that Vault for you, even though it's in your instance of Azure. The alternative uh, is that actually, if you if you are not looking to deploy your own Azure subscription, then we can do it into ours. You can back up into our Azure um, instance. So, if you're looking at the um, into uh, into R into Evolts Azure integration, it means that you don't have to have your uh, if you, or you don't have an enterprise agreement. Then um, for smaller customers. Um, that might be a, a good option for yourself, um, and, and uh, it just means it takes all, all the, uh, the contractual uh, issues away because we manage all that interaction with, with Microsoft, and we do the uh, setup and, and the, the initial management for you. The alternative is for those of you who, will, who do have uh, your own Azure. Again, we can we can um, leverage that. In, and uh, to, uh, you, you give us access to a certain part of that uh, infrastructure that, that you have, and we will uh, create the vaults, and we will also then on, uh, monitor them and manage them for you. So what we're looking at there is our, our vault uh, administrators will be constantly looking at those um, on, um, in cloud uh, devices and making sure they're running properly and the service is being delivered to you effectively because you are paying for a service from us. This is, this is um, a, a monthly build service. So we have two solutions that leverage um, Azure. We have uh, a product that, that um, works and focuses around laptops and desktops, uh, and we have uh, another that looks and focuses around servers. And the reason why we have this is that uh, if you look at these sort of attributes or lifestyle of these two different uh, types of, of systems, then there's a very much a different um, solution that's needed for them. Laptops uh, and desktops typically exist in the hundreds or thousands within organizations. Um, they're in, generally they're portable, uh, for, especially with the laptops, and they're physically exposed um, to you know um, users to um, the elements to being uh, dropped or broken, left behind. Uh, and that comes down to vulnerabilities as well. Um, and their usage is irregular. You can't always guarantee they're going to be on at a certain time. The, the technology is typically a lower grade than, than that in servers uh, in terms of the components used. Um, and it's all about individual productivity um, that, that is affected by an outage or loss of data at that level. Uh, and the connectivity is usually very variable, whether it's people working remotely from home um, or from uh, an internet cafe or, or over a, a wireless hotspot or actually in the office. So you can't guarantee what level of connectivity they're going to have or when they're going to have it. When you compare that to servers, the numbers are usually lower. They're very much static. They're physically secure within a, in a data center or computer room. And they're behind um, uh, the strongest uh, sort of security systems that the, that the, the, the 
company has deployed. So they're typically that much better protected. They're always on. So in terms of scheduling backups, it's much easier. Um, and they're usually hardened and redundant and sort of enterprise level uh, technologies. Um, and the loss of these, loss of data on these is usually business critical rather than down to the individual productivity. So again, it can be a, a greater impact to the business if they're, if they're offline. So all these points here are an illustration as to why we need something a little bit different to deliver um, a backup solution. So the endpoint protection for the laptops, um, it's, uh, you, it's um, predominantly deployed into the Azure uh, platform, and that gives us uh, an ability to deliver a solution which is virtually infrastructure free. So there's no need to deploy huge amounts of technology and, and, uh, and systems in-house to, to deploy this and manage it. Uh, it's, it fully integrates into Active Directory, so you can actually create policies by group and, and so on. So the actual installation of the technology and the deployment of the technology across your, the environment is very, very easy. Um, whereas the backup for servers, uh, we have a numerous ways of, of, de de uh, of delivering that. That could be the, uh, a purely on-premise solution. It could be into Azure, as we've already discussed, or it could be into an Evolve data center or even a partner's data center. Um, and the, the, uh, both these technologies are actually used by service providers to deliver services, so it's, it's of that grade of, of technology. So a bit more detail about the endpoint protection uh, and how it integrates into the uh, Azure platforms and actually leverages the strengths of the uh, Azure platform. As you can see here, this example here where an organization has maybe some remote offices, uh, um, users who work remotely. Uh, and obviously uh, maybe a, a corporate HQ. And the system is flexible enough to be able to um, send data to either the, the local network cache to improve performance locally with our many, many users. Those remote guys can actually hook straight up into the cloud. And if you move between one location, or so a remote user comes into the headquarters for a, a day's work, it will automatically work out where data is and how it's going to synchronize all that. Again, it's globally, globally deduped data, so it's moving the minimum amount of, of data around the network. Um, and the great thing about this is that in terms of the admin overhead, once you've got the policy set up, um, the user installs the application himself on his, on his desktop, and from that point on, the backup happens automatically because all the, the backend configuration is done, and um, the users then get protected. Um, so in terms of what we're actually doing here is it gives you the ability to recover a lot of damaged business information, so any machine that's damaged or lost can be marked as such, uh, and the customer or the user can actually re retrieve that data very, very easily themselves, either via um, their own UI, if that's still available to them, or via um, remote, remote logging in via um, a web console. The information is encrypted, as you'd expect, as we discussed earlier on, very important to make sure that data is encrypted, because obviously these are going to be going across um, usually fairly vulnerable links, uh, depending on where the, the user is sat at the time of the backup um, taking place. Some of the technology that's built into this um, uh, product is the ability to actually do remote wipes. So if the device is reported lost or stolen, um, uh, of course, some people can send out to destroy the data with an external machine is booted up. Um, and it can even be time-based, so you could, you could configure it, for example, to say, uh, after three weeks of not connecting into the network, delete all my data uh, from that device. So again, it helps prevent data loss rather than just providing a backup solution. And the other aspect of this has been the ability to lock down and control the, um, the usage of USB drives and CD writers and, and so on to make sure we've got sort of, um, uh, again, further, further prevention uh, technology there for, for loss of data. And in terms of going back to this, uh, this, thing, this uh, premise of delivering an uh, uh, IT light product, the users do all the restores themselves, and you can give them certain privileges to actually enable the backups themselves as well, but most, in most cases it's purely a restore-only function. But it's done through a UI on, on, their, on their desktop, and uh, it's, it doesn't really require any training at all, it's, it's highly intuitive. 
for those who have lost their, their core system, their laptops have been damaged or stolen, they can log in via an alternative device and restore data uh, that way and, uh, and, and forward it on to another device if they need to. So moving on to the server technology, um, the core of, the, of this technology is, is, is around protecting your uh, uh, primary servers, whether they're Windows or they're Virtualized or Linux or Unix. Um, the data is then passed off to a, a, a localized uh, cache or localized vault and then synchronized up into the cloud. And this is, as you can see, is a, is a hybrid solution, what we call cloud connected. Uh, it delivers um, your offsite backup as part of the process. It's fast because you've got local backups and recoveries from the on-premise uh, vault. Uh, and also you've got the ability to fail over and, re and do restores from, from the cloud should your local device uh, fail. Or if you lose that connectivity to the cloud, you can still proceed with your backups and restores from the local device while you wait for that connection to be uh, to be restored. There is technology uh, called, uh, called, called satellite vaults to be able to centralize data from remote offices. So we have a lot of customers out there who will be using this kind of uh, configuration where they have a small, probably virtualized uh, local vault sitting out on, on the remote office where they have um, a number of users or a number of systems collecting backups and then synchronizing them back to them at the primary vault at the HQ and then that's synchronized up into the cloud. And we also have another number of uh, customers who, rather than using cloud vaults, actually have a second site where they actually have a second vault. And so it's completely private. We've got a private cloud solution. The technology we, de we deploy in this is exactly the same. Uh, it's just a question of geography, where is that vault located? And of course, um, in the context of this conversation, it really is about um, talking about uh, Microsoft Azure providing that back-end uh, vault for you. So the server technology is available as a uh, software to deploy in as a, as a private network or um, as an appliance for the same. Uh, and what we've been focusing on here today is as, as a service into the Azure cloud. And that's on a monthly billing basis. So it's very much a, a, um, an, an OPEX heavy um, solution rather than a, a CapEx model. So again, that might benefit certain budgets and and help it become more affordable uh, to run as a, as, a, as a monthly occurring um, stream uh, rather than a, a one-off bill. The technology delivers features that you would, you would expect of an enterprise class technology, so granular recovery for things like Exchange and SharePoint and SQL, whereby you can drill down into your backups and recover individual emails or calendar items, uh, etc., without having to restore the entire Exchange server. Um, we support uh, virtual platforms. We have direct plugins to VMware and Hyper-V to enable um, uh, hypervisor level backups of the guest machines. And as I mentioned before, we, we also support um, multiple um, operating systems um, across, across the spectrum. So just to uh, wrap up, really a bit of a summary here, um, the, the two technologies both of them leveraging the Azure platform to give you that um, level of resilience, give you the, the off-site um, copy of, of data to give you your DR position, um, and uh, all done in a secure environment where everything is encrypted from beginning to end. Um, so with that, I think we're going to move to a question and answer session. Okay, so we have one question here from Dave, and it says, is there any advantage of using Azure over the eVault cloud? Um, it's, sorry, it's Toby Kenya from, from eVault here. I mean, the, um, the, the, the service is pretty much the same, and, and the, the uh, advantage over one or the other, it really comes down to the circumstances. If you have an Azure subscription, then we can, you know, you can then take advantage of that uh, in, in amongst your, your, your contract. I'm sure uh, Eric will be able to answer more on that particular aspect. Um, and again, it's about geography, really, where you want the, the data to end up. Um, Evolt has a, a, a UK data center, um, which is good for our, our UK customers. But uh, obviously that means if you have an Azure subscription already in place, you can't then leverage it for, for that. So there, there are swings and roundabouts, but the technology that we deliver is uh, exactly the same. The, the, the basis of the service in terms of the, the managing, the monitoring 
um, of the vaults, whether it's in our data center or in the, the Azure D DCs, um, is the same level of service that, that you would get. The, uh, and you know, uh, interesting enough, that the price point, if you're using eVaults Azure subscription or you're using eVaults data center, the price point is exactly the same. We, we, we don't make a distinction between it, it's, it's down to customer choice on that. And where, you know, for, for our point at a corporate level, um, we have an advantage in using uh, the Microsoft uh, platform is that we have uh, broader geographic uh, coverage, um, specific, um, um, especially around sort of the Middle and Far East where we don't have any uh, data centers at this current place in time. Okay, thank you. Uh, and we have another question here. So this is from Harvey, who has asked, um, is, there, is there a chance of some pricing examples? Um, I haven't got any pricing examples um, right in front of me, but just top of my head. We bill, I mean, this is again for the eVault service, um, uh, not, not, in, um, not the, the Azure piece. We bill on a, a per terabyte per month basis. So if you're less than a terabyte, there are breakpoints in, in various levels of um, hundreds of gigabytes. Um, and then once you get above a terabyte, it's either in half or full terabyte increments. And to give you an indication, and this is the full list price at the, at the most expensive level, it's around about 500 pounds per terabyte per month. Um, and again, obviously that scales down as you scale up. Thanks, David. Hi, it's Matt here from Bytes. And then just to, to add to that, really, um, I mean, that is the, uh, the, the, for the full list price that Toby's given you an example of there. So as Bytes is a fully accredited partner, um, we can obviously work with you um, to try and find a, a, a price point that suits. So I can certainly be in touch with you regarding that. Okay, thank you, Matt. Um, and we have one more question, um, which says, so how will this work at Asia Pacific region where, um, where I was going to back up my data for the three countries? So you, you, you cut out towards the end, uh, Amy. Could you just repeat the question? Oh, apologies. Um, yeah, so the question says, um, how will this work at Asia Pacific region where I was going to back up my data from the three mm -hmm. countries? Well, it's a, it's, a, it's a good question and that's exactly why we've partnered. Well, one of the main reasons we partner with Microsoft on this is that we can leverage, um, uh, and I'm working on, uh, on, on a, um, uh, with a customer at the moment who has a, a global reach and now global data and global uh, server um, uh, locations and what we're doing is we're, we're, we're localizing each um, backup so it's going to the most appropriate Azure uh, data center. So the, those in the US going to the various US ones, those in the um, in the far and Middle East are, we're, we're, we're still working on which ones we're going to go to but I think Singapore is one of the probably most likely targets for, for that and the great thing is the management of the whole thing can be done with the same UI um, uh, it doesn't matter where the data goes, um, it can be localized and be managed or as if it was in the same, or it was in the UK, it looks exactly the same. Okay, thank you. Uh, and so Harvey has another question, um, so Harvey asked the, the, the question about uh, pricing examples. Um, he's asked, so how does that work if you use the Azure, oh sorry, if you use the service with our own Azure platform? Uh, then the price is significantly reduced. There is a, a lower price point. We have a specific uh, part code um, range for customers who have their own Azure. So obviously, in that case, we're not we're, we're not footing that that particular part of the of the cost because um, obviously that's part of your subscription. So yes, then there's a significant uh, difference in price between the two. Okay, thank you, Toby, um, and <clears throat> thank you, Eric, also for today. Um, so that's all the questions we have, um, and thank you for joining us all uh, in the webinar.